and sitting on the eastern shores of the Galilee in what in the modern day period is known as the Golan Heights. But at the time of Yeshua, this was a really important city. It was actually part of what was known as the Decapolis and these were 10 independent city-states. They were very strong and very powerful cities. This one was known as Susita or Hippos. It had several names and both of them relate to the fact that it is on a mountain that looks like it is shaped like a horse. So that's what the word Susita or Hippos actually means. Now the majority of the ministry of Yeshua actually took place on the northwestern end of the Sea of Galilee and that is because the focus of his ministry was to the lost sheep of the house of Israel but he didn't only reach out to the Jewish people there are various moments in the gospel narrative where it is as if he wanted to make sure that he left a witness not only among all the tribes of Israel throughout the land but also all the other people groups who were living here such as the Samaritans who were living in northern Samaria and also the people of Tyre and Sidon in what is modern-day Lebanon so in the gospel narrative there are several moments where he crosses over to the other side of the sea and if you don't come here to see that for yourself you might not understand the significance of it so when he's crossing over to the other side He's crossing over to the Gentile population. And in fact, one of the names for this region was Galilee of the Nations. There were a lot of different people groups living around this area. So it seems from the gospel narrative that there were two miracles performed on this side of the lake so that he could show the people of this region also who he really was, that he was the Messiah, not only of Israel, but also of all the nations. So he crosses over to this side of the lake, and one time when he is over here, he performs the miracle of the feeding of the 4,000. If we examine the, the gospel accounts closely, we will see that there is a feeding of the 5,000, and there is a feeding of the 4,000. And it would seem like this took place on this side of the lake for the Gentiles who were living here, and that the feeding of the 5,000 took place in Bethsaida. And that would have been a miracle that was performed for the Jewish people. And in fact, in the recent archeological excavations, they actually discovered a mosaic up here that they believe may have been commemorating that miracle. And it was actually found in one of a large number of churches that were actually built up here in the early Christian period. And it would seem that those churches had taken that witness of the miracles that were performed in this area and then they built churches to commemorate that and that there was a vibrant Christian community here in this Decapolis city. So the other miracle that was performed on this side of the lake was the man who had the legion of demons living inside of him and unlike when Yeshua performed the miracles for the Jewish people and he said don't tell anybody about this or he said to them, go and tell the priest and offer the appropriate sacrifice. This is not what he says to the man who is delivered from the demons. And by the way, how do we know that this man was a Gentile and not a Jew to start with? And how do we know that this area was Gentile? Well, the demons are cast out into a herd of pigs. If this was a Jewish area, there wouldn't be any pigs here because of the kashrut laws that are given in the Torah, the five books of Moses, to the Jewish people, they are not allowed to eat pig meat, so there would be no reason for them to be keeping the pigs. And actually there are some scholars that would suggest that maybe this large herd of pigs was actually being used here in Hippos, where in former times there was a large pagan temple, perhaps they were even being used as sacrifices in this temple. So the story goes that after this man is delivered, he's told to go back to the place that he's from and to tell everybody. Perhaps he comes back here to Hippos, to Susita, to this large, flourishing, important Decapolis city, and he tells all the people about this man. And remember that this man who had all of these demons would have been very obvious. He would have been well known. Imagine him grinding his teeth and perhaps he's having epileptic fits and he is shackled and he's in a cave. And I'm quite sure that everybody who lived in this region knew about him. And of course, especially his parents. 
And now imagine that all of a sudden this man is delivered and he's in his right mind. This would have been a sign and a wonder to this whole area. And I would suspect that Yeshua performing these miracles on this side of the Galilee led to something that we see in the ministry of the Apostle Paul just several decades later when he is going to Damascus in this direction and he is going to persecute the believers who live there. How did there come to be believers in Damascus just a number of decades after the ministry of Yeshua? Well, I think it's probably from the witness, from these miracles performed on this side of the lake, that the gospel witness went to the surrounding lands, to the other Decapolis cities of this region that were the heads of this region. And so from there, I'm sure that the good news also spread to the small towns and villages of this region. So if you think about it, where we're sitting in this area, this is where the church really was born. It's not born in Rome. It's born in the land of Israel, both among the Jewish people and among the Gentiles who were living in this whole area.